Afternoon YouTube, welcome back to Fat Cat Collections. Take out another great product for your home, especially for your, your holiday needs uh, in this time of winter and cold weather. Uh, this is a space heater by Drio. Uh, so they were nice enough to reach out to me and send me four products. Uh, this is the first of four, so you guys are gonna be seeing uh, three other products from this brand. And they make basically products that are, um, I guess, um, are kind of uh, in regards to air quality and air temperature needs, right? So they make space heaters, they make fans, they make air conditioning units, although they only have two, uh, and they have um, a couple kitchen products. So stay tuned for more. Uh, so this is their largest ceramic heater. And if you're not familiar with a ceramic heater, basically it's a space heater that uses uh, sort of like a ceramic element in here. And I guess the idea in that is that it gets hot quick and produces heat a lot faster than a lot of other um, other types of heating elements out there, right? Um, also, ceramic is supposed to be somewhat more efficient, although I don't know um, if I can't verify those claims. Ultimately, when I look at whether, you know, especially when it comes to space heaters, ultimately the power consumption depends on how much wattage you're drawing, right? So these aren't the most efficient uh, things out there, but um, from what I've read, ceramic is more efficient than your standard oil filled heaters and it's more efficient than your standard like um, like metal heating element right uh, I believe probably because the ceramic kind of gets hot and stays hot uh, whereas opposed to like a metal element uh, I would think that that's um, has potential to cool quicker and not retain its heat so that's just my opinion on what I th what I think the difference is uh, by all means check it out read about it you know this isn't rocket science stuff Th these have been around for a very long time but um, why I was excited to get this was my folks at their house, uh, they have a, a, a pretty large kind of what we call it the bonus room over the garage. And whenever you have a room in your house that's exposed to, um, for instance, an exterior wall, or in their case, this particular bonus room is over the garage, and then it, of course it, it's, uh, it's exposed by uh, sort of a, a lower roof line in the back. I, I can't draw it out to you, but they, take my word for it. It's exposed by, uh, by a lot more of the elements than like a standard room inside a house, right? It's a corner room. It, of course, has a ceiling in one portion of the back of the room that is, uh, you know, of course, there is insulation all that, but the ceiling's pretty close to the inside ceiling of the room. There's not an attic over it is what I'm trying to say. Um, so you have that exposure, and then, of course, you have a couple closets that are, um, that are, uh, sort of like dormer kind of closets, right? And so there's basically a roof line that follows the roof, the, the ceiling line. And so whenever you have a situation like that, it's done in many, many homes, you don't have a big area of insulation above the living space. So the roof is definitely more exposed, plus having it over the garage, there's more, you know, uh, the, it's, a, it's an unheated garage. Uh, so of course, um, you know, garages do retain a little bit of temperature from your furnace in there. Uh, but anyway, it, the, the room is the most exposed room in the house. And unfortunately, the knuckleheads who originally put the heating system in, they only put, I think, one return, one uh, heating return in the room. So, guy, whoever did the heating system there, we're not going to call out any names, but uh, they didn't really, they didn't do it correctly. A room that size should definitely have had a couple, a uh, couple of registers in the room. So, uh, with that being stated, you may have a room like that in your house. If you have a pretty large house, chances are you do. And so, this is a great option. So, um, they've been using for years an oil-filled heater, and all of that works. It takes some time to warm up. Now there are options for oil heaters. A lot of the newer ones actually have built-in thermostats and timers, stuff like that. Theirs is pretty basic. So uh, yeah, could they have bought one over the years? You know, we're the kind of people that once we have it, it's kind of like, yeah, do we want to spend money on something else? You know, it works. Uh, the only downside is you don't get that instant heat. With something like a ceramic heater, you get the efficiency of the ceramic element and you get instant heat. So you forget to turn the heater on. Maybe we're downstairs most of the day. You know, we're hanging out downstairs. We decide to go upstairs and watch a movie. The heater's not on, the room can get pretty cold, right? And so this is a great, great instant heat option. So what I also like about this is, not to, not to, not to, not to bash on anybody, but you know, you, this is my, I'm a lot, here, here's a little story. I'm a lot more knowledgeable now as an older guy uh, than I ever was, right? Uh, I've learned a lot about, you know, heating. I've learned a lot about electric work. Um, and you know, I'm not a professional in any of these categories, but I, um, I understand, uh, um, it seems like I have a lot more common sense than a lot of these people you pay to do things. So one other issue is they put the entire, the electrician now, put the entire room on one circuit. Uh, and that circuit, uh, when you go having a Christmas tree on, right, you go having a television set on, you go having a computer on that room, it's a multi-use room, uh, go throwing a space heater on there and now you're, you're testing the limits of the breaker. So most circuits, 
you have 15 amp breaker, most homes have 15 to 20 amp. Uh, most of the time, 15. Uh, and again, your house may be different, but uh, it, that's 1,500 watts basically in a nutshell. So it, it doesn't take long to really eat up that that wattage, and then you don't have any kind of headroom, and then you trip the breaker. So in their case, if we try to put that heater on in that room on full blast, which is 1,200 watts, maybe even 15, throw the Christmas tree on there, the computer, come a couple other things. Chris, you know, like I said, watching a movie. Um, next thing you know, we're tripping the breaker. So with something like this, this is going to be really helpful because not only are you getting the instant heat, uh, you're also getting the ability to adjust the power draw. So you have five different modes on this. You have a fan only mode, which to me, um, I don't really understand why they might have put the fan only mode on because it doesn't really blow a lot of air. It's not going to move a lot of air. Um, you know, this isn't to be compared to like a ceiling fan or even just a, a basic box window fan or anything like that. Um, but it does move a little bit of air. So you get a little bit of circulation, uh, but you do have an eco mode. You have a 700 watt, a 900 watt, and a 1500 watt mode. And so that's absolutely fantastic because in their case, we can put this on 700 watt mode and not be tripping the breaker during Christmas time, right? Um, again, we can kick it up to 900. 1500 might be a little bit high for everything we got going on in there. But that's my point. You know, that's it's not just their situation. My garage is another perfect example. I have a, a similar heater in my garage that doesn't have the blower. And the blower makes a big difference in spreading the heat throughout the space a lot quicker than just a standard, um, you know, ceramic element that, that heat has to radiate out, you know. Um, so the one in my garage, if I cranked it up full bore, you know, have the stereo on, the TV on, you know, it, it, it's kind of pushing the limits of the breaker. So just kind of keep that in mind, you know, if you are building a house, um, you know, if you have a space for multiple use like that, you might be having multiple things going on there. Might be a good idea to have the electrician put in a larger line, larger uh, capacity breaker, or just two separate breakers, two separate circuits feeding the room. Uh, so now that we got all that out of the way. So again, a lot of features in this. Uh, you do get a remote control, which is pretty cool. So you can sit on, sit on your lazy ass on the couch and adjust the temperature, which is kind of nice. Again, you have the eco mode. And what the eco mode does is you can actually individually set the temperature. So that's going to be great in their situation because we want the room to be comfortable, but we don't want to have a heater on wasting power all day long. With the eco mode, this sucker has a built-in thermostat. So set it to 69 degrees, 70 degrees, pretty comfortable. This will, once it heats up to that temperature, it'll kick off. Now, not just not only does it kick off the heating element, but it actually kicks off the fan and goes into like a hibernation mode. So that's great. Uh, I've never had any other heater ever that, that did that. So I'm sure a lot of them do nowadays. That's a great way to save power because I can tell you, when you go turning on a heater, even for an hour a day, you will see the difference in your power bill every month. It may only be, you know, 10, 20 bucks, but still, 10, 20 bucks, everything going on, all the expenses we got going on and prices increasing, you know, it's great that we have uh, something like this that gives it eco mode. Um, other than that, you have a timer, which is also nice. Set this sucker to turn off within looks like uh, within 24 hours. So uh, let me just turn it on here. I'm gonna try to show you. I have it plugged in at the moment. You can get an idea of what it looks like. Uh, pretty cool. It does oscillate as well, which I don't think is a huge uh, benefit, you know, but um, oscillating is kind of nice. Usually what fans oscillate to try to, you know, basically give coverage to the, you know, whoever's, uh, I guess, in the path of the fan. With something like this, I guess that's kind of helpful, I guess. Uh, you know, better to have it than not. Um, you know, in our pers situation, we'll probably just leave it stationary. It also has a, um, a tip protection. So one thing about these, you know, they are lightweight. They're made of plastic. Um, you know, and you, God forbid, something should, you know, an animal, your pet, something should tip over. Um, you know, you don't want a fire happening. This, once you tip it over and move it, it automatically kills the, the heating element and kills the vice. Goes in sort of like a protection mode. So I think uh, most heaters have that, but I like the fact it does have that. And if you do buy this prior to using it, go ahead and put that to the test. You know, plug it in, tip it over, move it around, make sure that that, that protection mode is working. God forbid you don't want to have any kind of fire. Um, I would also recommend putting this somewhere that's, um, you know, maybe uh, on a table somewhere, you know, again, at your own risk, use this and then, and, and uh, you know, use your common sense of where you're going to put this. Don't put it near anything, you know, keep some room around it, consult the manufacturer's instructions and recommendations. Uh, but this is great. As far as the noise, some of you folks might be a little sensitive to noise. I am not. Um, it says here you have a noise level at as low as 40 dBs, and they say that that's equivalent to a library. So very quiet. I did plug this in and test it. It's awesome. As far as the control panel, you have the control panel right on top. Power, oscillation, timer, thermostat, and your mode button. So let's got to turn it on for a second here. And 
there we go, turn it on, right? Uh, you can see we have the temperature set right here, and uh, we can cycle through the mode. So if we press the top button, we'll see we have H3, and you can cycle through H1, 2, or 3, and that's the wattage difference. I believe the H1 is 700 watt, then H2 is 900 watt, and then H3 is 1500 watt. It might be reversed, I haven't read the manual yet. Uh, if we press it again, we go into eco mode, and this is where you can actually set the temperature. So I have it set at 69, I just heard the fan uh, in the heating element click off. Uh, what will happen here is if we let this sit long enough, it'll actually turn off the fan completely and go into a hibernation mode. Once the temperature drops in your specific space, down past that 69 degree set temperature, the fan, the heating element will kick on again. So very, very cool, very awesome. It has a 25 RPM uh, fan. I'm not sure if you can hear it on camera, but there you go, just kicked off. So, I mean, this is really fully featured and just a fantastic uh, small footprint. Uh, this is going to be great, and I really look forward to throwing this up there tonight, actually, and seeing how well it works. Um, I have no uh, no question that this is going to be a, a perfect solution for that room. Here's the remote control. Pretty basic. Uh, that's about it. I, I encourage you to click the link in the description, read more about it. Uh, as far as the... Um, couple special features it they recommend or they say this this fan is good for uh, a 10 it says here 10 square feet velocity uh, I guess that means you could probably feel the heat within 10 feet remember that you know that doesn't mean you, the room has to be 10 square feet it's a pretty small room uh, you know this is gonna work just fine on, on really any room uh, you know there are limitations of course uh, but for you know a, a room I'd say maybe 250 to 400 square feet it's probably gonna be fine uh, you could always order two of them if you have a real you know heating problem uh, but I, I think you know like I said this is just basically going to take the chill out of the room and get the room to temperature if you have a situation where you have a kind of a drafty room. Uh, again, this is great for the garage. If, if I didn't already have a heater in my garage, uh, this definitely would have been going in my garage. I have a little bit of reservations even bringing it up to folks' house because this is something I could really use in the garage. But I, because, I, you know, I work out in there wintertime, it's really cold. Uh, but, you know, um, yeah, we'll use it up there. Uh, what else? It does have a V0 flame retardant material. They say it's safe and reliable. It's an ETL listed ceramic heater. Uh, it has multiple security features, overheat protection, tip over protection and uh, it will auto shut off after 24 hours without operation so I believe if you don't mess with any of the controls or whatever it's going to default to shutting off after 24 hours regardless so it's really great you know in case you forgot you went out for a weekend uh, nice to, to know you, it'll be turned off uh, and that's really about it. Now, important thing, price, 72 bucks. So uh, that's with Amazon uh, Prime with free returns if you don't like it. If this is a fan uh, that is, or a heater that's, uh, you know, uh, too big for your needs, let's say you have a little office environment, they have smaller models, uh, they have their H3, they have their H2, they have their Pro, um, and whoops, I'm sorry, those are purifiers. <laughs> Let me go back to space heaters here, excuse me. Um, all right, so as far as base seers are concerned, uh, you have a very small uh, kind of desktop model. Basically, they're all the same features, just scaled down. Again, the Slim H3, I guess it is one, the Solaris Slim H3, uh, Solaris Slim H2, and uh, this is the Solaris Max. So, uh, and they just stay here, larger surface, longer heating. Uh, and there's a few other models here, absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, I, I think that, Anything like this is definitely something that you can add to your home. Remember that electrical heating is not the most efficient thing in the world. Uh, again, but that does depend on where you live and how much you're paying for energy. It, everybody's situation is a little different. But if you do have a situation in your house, apartment, business, where it's a little drafty, a little cool, uh, this is definitely a solution. So I want to thank... Um, um, this company for sending me this uh, this particular item. Um, you know, definitely excited to get new things on the channel. And again, I keep wanting to say the name is Dreo. Uh, it's Drio. So uh, again, as always, links in the description. If you want to check out their other products, they have an air fryer that's going to be coming in the mail. They have a tower fan that's also coming in the mail and an air conditioning window unit. So stay tuned for that. I want to thank Dreo. Drio for their generosity and saying this out to me. And if I can help you guys in any way, drop me an email, drop me a comment. I am always here to help. Have a wonderful day. Happy holidays. Stay warm and take care.